Hello, Physics Nation. My name is Nate Larmond, and I'd like to introduce a pretty common demonstration where, ooh, let me get the halo, hang on, where you put a little low friction cart on a ramp, a very gently sloped ramp, and you put a little motion detector, a little radar gun. This is like a bat or a dolphin at the top. What I did was I gave the cart a little push, and then it freely rolled up stopped, came back down, and then smacked against a stack of books down here. My cart had a little spring-loaded plunger because MHS spares no expense on your education. These carts are about $100, but uh, I think we can make some pulleys and simulate my fancy demonstration. Anyway, as you can see, the data set is squeaky clean, and I'm going to demonstrate how to find uh, the acceleration based on this portion of the velocity versus time graph. So this is the push. As you can see, we're on the x-axis. This is zero velocity. I'm sorry it's so small. Uh, anyway, we are going from negative 0.1 to negative 0.2 to negative 0.3, and finally ending at, I don't know, negative 0.42 meters per second, something like that. It's, uh, where's the maximum? Yeah, right there, negative 0.42 meters per second. So. All that means is we stopped accelerating. This is a region of gaining motion. This is confusing because it's getting more and more negative. All that means is we're getting, um, we're moving towards the origin with a faster and faster negative velocity. So this is acceleration. We're speeding up. And right around here is where my hand loses contact with the cart. So this is all free rolling acceleration. And I'm going to let you guys find this acceleration, find this acceleration. That's a special point. You're going to find this acceleration. And then you're going to find the impact acceleration. So this is all freely rolling on the ramp. And then it smacks that stack of books right there. So how do we find acceleration based on a velocity versus time graph? Well, uh, those are the instructions. Here's the picture version. I think the scan's a little bit more clean. So here's my free body diagram. Uh, the push is parallel to the ramp and towards the origin. So this is kind of an unusual frame of reference, and students get caught in this trap a lot. Positive x is away from the detector, so that's actually parallel to the slope, down the slope. And positive y is perpendicular to the ramp that is normal to the ramp. So uh, all this means is perpendicular or at a right angle. Normal is just a fancy way to say, you know, 90 degrees. So weight is down, normal is perpendicular to the ramp, and the push is parallel but towards the origin. So that's a negative net force, and that's sort of the whole point of this. We find a negative acceleration, but remember, we're gaining motion. So this is confusing. Do not think negative accelerations mean slowing down. It's a vector. The sign indicates direction. And in our kind of wacky tilted frame of reference, uh, up, that is towards the top of this ramp, is negative. Anyway, the calculation is pretty simple. I estimated my push to begin at 0.2 seconds. That is two tenths of a second. And I estimated my push to end at half a second, 0 0.5 seconds. If you find that final velocity at half a second, that is the maximum negative uh, uphill velocity to be negative 0.42 meters per second, then you just do final velocity minus initial velocity divided by elapsed time. I'm trying to use standardized uh, college board notation where final has no subscript, and initial is this little v naught. So we're going to do final motion, negative 0.42 meters, subtract initial motion, zero, it was still before I pushed it, all divided by final time minus initial time, that is half a second minus 0.2. If you hit the buttons on the calculator, you get negative 1.4 meters per second change in velocity for every one second elapsed. All right, so another rate of change for the first two weeks, we focused on the rate of change of position, that is average velocity, and acceleration is just another rate of change, except now it's the rate of change of velocity. So, you know, we're just learning this stuff. You usually don't write it as a compound fraction, meters per second divided by seconds. You just say meters per second squared. 
And again, what does the sign indicate? Well, it indicates direction. And because the acceleration is up parallel to the um, surface of the ramp, the net force is up parallel to the surface of the ramp. So our push cancels out the uh, downhill component of the weight. That is the parallel component of the weight. We'll get to that shortly. And it also cancels out the friction force. I didn't even draw the friction force because of these low friction carts. So thanks for watching. See you in the next video.